With Ryan Shumpert, BrentHubsVolQuest.com. We go around the horn on the Sunday evening. Tennessee, not their best, Ryan, but a series win on the road in the SEC. Good time maybe to play not one of the better teams in the SEC because Tennessee did not play their best, yet they continue to do what they've done all year long. They find ways to win. Yeah, absolutely. And really, every every facet of the game, it, was, it wasn't their best. It didn't field very well. It wasn't their best pitching weekend. And while the bats were, were good on Sunday, they weren't timely all weekend long. Left a ton of, ton of runners on base. I think 30 was the number. So a lot of things to fix, a lot of things to, to clean up going into a weekend series with Florida. But you go on the road and you take two out of three in this conference. You take it uh, every, every single time you can. All right, let's talk a little bit about Friday night. Uh, Dallas did not have his best stuff, obviously, did not go deep into, into the night. Um, got lifted pretty early. They had the lead there, and the game gets away from them in the middle part of the innings there. Um, so you wonder how Tennessee is going to bounce back on Saturday. What do they do? We've talked about it. They're going to go Heflin. They're going to piecemeal this thing. And Will Heflin probably was the best starting pitcher Tennessee had this weekend. That's got to be an encouraging sign for Tennessee. He goes five and two-thirds and to me was as good as he's been all season long. Yeah, absolutely. His first, his first start was against Georgia State. He was really good in that game, seven innings, but obviously that's Georgia State, and he hasn't been anything like he was, was Saturday the rest of, rest of the season, and he was really effective, and when Tennessee needed him most, and you go into that game thing, and the bats are going to have to step up for him, and the bats did not step up for him. He got no run support, but he hung in there. He, he got deep into the game, and especially you look, Dallas got run from the game early on Friday, so they had to use a lot of their bullpen on Friday, so it was even more important that he could get them deep into the game, and that's exactly what he did, and then he got didn't get the win, but got out of it, and, and Tennessee's bullpen pitched pretty well, and, and the bats got enough going to get, get a big win to force the Sunday rubber match. All right, let's talk a little bit about the, the closing out of the Saturday night game. They went 8-4 and 11, and, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but is it is it really concern time for, for Walsh right now with, with what he's not been able to do in the SEC weekends? Is this is there something more there than he's just not he's just not throwing it real well because they're just not getting hardly anything out of out of Redmond Walsh when they go to him in the pen. And he was he's been so good for Tennessee uh, the last couple of seasons. He's been a difference maker for them. But boy, it seems like it's a real struggle for him right now. Yeah, I think it's very much worry time with him and. I don't see how you can keep him in that closer role going forward. I'm not to the point where I'm saying I wouldn't pitch him on the weekends. I think he, you can still give him that opportunity, but three straight Saturdays, he's blown the lead. And you look, you came in on, on Saturday's game and first pitch 84, right down the middle. He looked at next pitch. They take for an opposite field hit and they hit him hard. The, the hit ended up tying the game actually wasn't a very hard hit, but just not effective. Hasn't been able to hit his spots. And like we've talked about on here, he has to hit his spots to be effective. And it's, that's really where Kirby Connell's emergence has been so huge because Tennessee's past two years is Red, Redmond Walsh and Sean Hunley. And Sean Hunley's still been good, but it's been pieced together after that. But Kirby Connell's been able to fill that role that Walsh has kind of left. But going forward, I, I definitely think you're going to see a less role for Walsh until he can get more comfortable back into a rhythm. What is it about Connell that you like? Obviously, he was terrific in, in the Sunday game where, where Tennessee wins 9-8 in that game. If, if he gets some help in the field behind him, it, it's not that close, and, and he probably finishes out the game. They don't even have to go to Hunley for, for the save that, that he got. Um, what do you like about Connell? What, what, does he, what does he do on the mound that, that you think gives him a chance to, to see an increased role? Well, for one, I think it's just consistency. He's brought it every single – time he's been out there and then he's, he's able to locate his fastball well like a lot of guys in this Tennessee bullpen he's not going to blow you away with what he does with his fastball but he's able to consistently throw it for strikes and avoid throwing it over the heart of the plate and then his curveball is just really really good it's a great put away pitch and it's really really effective for him all weekend and it's been really effective for him. I, I want to ask you about on on Sunday about Tidwell and, and I thought that was a really gutty performance for him. You know, obviously things have gone pretty swimmingly for him since he's been in that Sunday role. Uh, this was not a, a day where he doesn't have his best stuff. Yet Alabama couldn't run him and really force Tennessee's pin, uh, you know, their bullpen to go extended innings. Getting him into the fifth and him getting himself into the fifth after the bad start he had in the first inning, I thought showed a lot of grit for the freshman. I mean, I – 
I know you don't take away from this one like, okay, this is the, you know, this is the moment for him. But but for him to fight through the adversity as a freshman the way he did today, I, I thought that was huge for Tennessee moving forward. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it obviously wasn't his best start, but in a lot of ways it might have been his most impressive start. To be a freshman, to get hit around like he was in the first inning and really the first couple innings, consistent hard contact on, but he kept fight, fighting. I think every inning he was in besides one, he had a base runner on base, was able to limit the Alabama damage, never let Alabama take you. And it was, a lot of it was a lot of fly balls that were pretty close to being – the way Alabama's pitcher was pushed from the game in the second inning and the way Alabama's bullpen struggled and the way Tennessee had had to use its bullpen on Friday night. And even though Heflin went deeper on Saturday, they still had to use a lot of it in the extra innings game. So it was huge for him to get Tennessee into the middle of that game and get it to where it just had to be Kirby Connell and Sean Hundley to get him to the finish line. All right, so Tennessee now has two road wins, two series wins on the road in SEC play, which is huge. We know what's coming. The gauntlet we've talked about. Florida comes to town this weekend. An interesting Florida team. They take two of three at home against Ole Miss. They've been really good at home all year long. They have not been a very good road team. They go to South Carolina. They get swept. Have not played particularly well on the road all season. What do you think is is the focal point for Tennessee this weekend to get or this week to get ready for the Gators? Yeah, it's a good question. I think. Some of it is figuring out what you're going to do in your bullpen because they've been so tight with the guys they've used this year. So now that you would think Walsh sees a little bit less of a role, who plugs in that role? Who's picking up innings for Tennessee? And then at the plate, you saw Tennessee use a lot of different guys this weekend that we haven't seen. How does that forego for out this next week? Does Tennessee continue to do that? Logan Steenstra with his bat made it hard to keep him out of the lineup. Now his glove was pretty bad. He's going to have to be better there. So I think it's kind of figuring out exactly who you're going to roll with. And Tennessee just has to, has to get more timely hitting from, from at the plate. They were pretty good this weekend overall. But against Florida, against Vanderbilt, when you have those bases loaded opportunities, which I think they had nine times in the last two games, you got to get hits. you got to be bringing in two or three runs. It just can't be one run when you have the bases loaded with nobody out, which is really how it was this weekend, even if they did get a run. And uh, they were so consistent hitting on Sunday. They were able to get base runners every inning that it worked out. They got nine runs, but you're going to see a lot better pitching next weekend than you saw for Alabama on Sunday. So when you get those opportunities, you absolutely have to take advantage. Yeah. Leaving runners on base has been a bugaboo for this team going back to that Georgia series where, you know, you thought the, you got the two wins, but you thought, boy, if they could have, they had a couple of opportunities in some innings to really blow the thing, you know, a couple of those games open and make them, uh, no doubters, if you will. I, I want to ask this as we kind of wrap it up here. Interesting that on Saturday, Vitello made a pretty couple of pretty significant lineup changes. It, I mean, he had been rolling with kind of the same eight and then whatever the pitcher was of record that day. It, pretty consistent with what that, that lineup had looked like in the field. Really changed things up on Saturday. Were you surprised? Do you think that was just a reaction to – the at-bats that he saw from guys on Friday night, was that message being sent? How surprised were you to see him kind of jumble the lineup the way he did on the Saturday night game after his team gets that opening Friday night loss on the road? Well, it was clear listening to his comments post-game that he was on Friday night. He, he was pretty upset with what he got from his team at the plate, what he got from his team overall, the energy that they had saying he thought that they thought it was going to be easy once they got up to an early lead. So, in that sense, I wasn't really surprised. Obviously, they got Steenstra and Booker in there. But I don't know if it was just the snap of that because Liam Spence moved to the DH. He's dealing with a little bit of an injury. So that's how why Steenstra started. And then they got Kyle Booker in there for Evan Russell. So I think it was just a little bit smaller. And Booker obviously had hit really well in the midweek game. And he pinched hit in that Friday night game. He actually struck out but worked a really good at bat. I think he made Alabama throw eight or nine pitches. So a little bit of – mixing things up I think maybe trying to send a message a little bit of injury and a little bit of Kyle Booker earning opportunity I think it was kind of a combination of those three things well bottom line is when you play this many series in this conference against this level of competition week in and week out you just got to find ways in Tennessee after a Friday night game that they didn't play their best that they, they, they didn't play their best on Saturday but yet here they are in another extra inning win they haven't lost any extra inning games this year and then you knew Sunday was going to be wild, and Tennessee found a way to give enough run support to peach together another day on the hill. And here Tennessee is with another series win, three in a row to start SEC play. Tony Vitello may not be great, may not loving everything about this team right now, 
but he has to like the grit of this baseball team right now. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. You told Tony Vitello three weeks in, it'd be a game out of first place in the SEC seven and seven and two to take that every single time. So while there is a lot to work on, I think that's almost an encouraging sign that you're able to pick up wins and this team's able to fight and win games when they haven't played well. And what a change that is from this program where if we think wrong, it felt like the team gave up and didn't believe they could win. Absolutely complete opposite with this team. They can play bad and they still feel for nine innings they can fight back and win a game. And they certainly did that uh, on Saturday and Sunday in Tuscaloosa. That's going to do it for this edition of Around the Horn. He's Ryan Shumpert. I'm Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com.